Leave the booming waves. Come in across the warm lagoon and meet the Polynesians of the Cook Islands. The graceful rhythms of these happy people are in tune with their environment, reflect their way of life, their lovely island home. They live in the carefree present and dance. From our oceanic ancestors in Southeast Asia and out through the Polynesian Triangle, the journey of Pacific dance has carried many messages and meanings of these evolving societies. Dance in Polynesia is the dance of life, affecting nearly every aspect of our unique Pacific cultures. With the trade wind singing in the palms, they put on fancy dress and greet you with a dance as colourful as a Rarotongan door. It's a different way of expressing people's way of life, you know, their music, their movement. I'm, I'm born with it. <laughs> that element in human nature, gosh, this is, this is it, this is the beat, you know. Whether you know how to sway your hips, you get up and you move. It's to do with expressions. You have to express your feelings when you get the beat, the rhythm of the song, and everything just comes natural. We pro probably have the most talented per population than any other society that I know of. I think it's important for a Pacific Island artist to um, also keep pushing our issues. Being able to tell my stories or our stories, uh, stories which pertain first to me and then to a people, um, and culture um, in the way how I see it. It's all about life and getting on with each other and, and the celebration. But within the different dances, there are, there are the behaviour, whether you, um, you, you're dancing for, um, you know, for a mate, and that, and that has always come through in, in our dances as well. And then if you sit there like now, when you're, you know, you're old, you're oldie like now, and you go and sit there, polyfest, and our girls are dancing, and all the guys are sitting, <laughs> you can tell the connections, because, I mean, it's only natural. You find that in every, in every dance. Look at the Samoan Dawalunga. Ooh, that is, in the final analysis, you know, sexually, Suggested in, in, in a very powerful sort of way. People can fall in, in love when, whenever they see a beautiful taupo dancing away, and, and then naturally they, they can be attracted to each other, so uh, dance can perform that function, you see. The taupo is also a person of. Um, a person of dignity, as I said earlier, but also a leader. The Taupo, or the Aung of Apai, which is really the, the proper name for the Taupo, the Aung of Apai, is the daughter of the High Chief, and therefore the leader of all the young women of the village, the daughters of other chiefs. And as such, she has that high, important rank herself, and must also show, by example, the way to behave, the way to move, the way to walk, and the way to talk. I mean, those are all aspects of Samoan culture. Know how to walk, know how to talk, know how to dance, in fact. Samoan life has that center of gracefulness, but also around it is the other aspect of life, that fun part, that frolic, that to and fro, 
you know, the everyday, ordinary day uh, living where there's a hurly-burly of life going on. And that's reflected in that type of dance. And part of the hurly-burly of Pacific life is the sheer fun of it, often expressed in the Samoan concept of faliaitu, celebrating the spirit of the body. Doing the whole Faliku um, performance um, on stage, it's amazing. If you give into it, if you give into being a clown um, on stage and um, giving out all this energy, you actually go into sort of like a virtual thing, you know, it's a, it takes you to a different level and you have so much fun with it. Um, sometimes the audience gets it and sometimes the audience don't. Everyday events is also put into sasas and, and whakaupaki. It's not just, you know, slapping for mosquitoes. Who knows, maybe it's part of those actions were from a sarukuangiu when you were young and, you know, from your parents, you get the sarukuangiu on the side, on the head, on the back. Our myths, legends, uh, love stories, our every, everyday events that we go through life is put on, even cooking is added on, like, for example, our sasa. Sometimes choreographer add in movements of doing um, how to do the coconut. Uh, traditional cooking is added into dance movement. We can dance whenever we want to dance, you know, and um, anybody can dance, you know, and um, regardless, like, for example, um, our people or any Pacific Islanders, it, there's, there, there's no limitation. Like, if you go to other dance companies or other dance cultures, you've got to have the certain weight. You've got to have the, you know, you're too big or you're too young or you're too old. But in, which I've learned from our own um, dances and our culture is anybody can dance, you know. Well, you should never let go of your grandparents or your grand uncles or your uncles or your aunties. You learn because it's, it's knowledge that it's going to go forever. I was brought up in a Samoan Presbyterian church and in youth we do ma'ulu'ulus and sasas and stuff and since I was little I've been learning how to do it and um, my nana here, she taught me how to be graceful and how to do my moves and smiling and doing the whakaupaki and stuff so yeah I'm really fortunate to have a nana and a blessing from above. people interested in where they're from and and even though you haven't been there that you can understand it to a certain degree but you don't have to learn the language you can learn the dance first you know if it's hard to learn a language learn the dance and I think from there it's it's very easy to embrace the culture from that angle we were entertained by our generous host in true Cook Island style Contrary to the idea that Pacific culture is about entertainment, many dance forms have different social messages for different occasions. Oh, at every occasion. I mean, you've got, we've got uh, the weddings, the um, hair cutting ceremonies, the, the ear piercing ceremony, and, and in the past, it's, it's dance for everything. the challenge of war through to rites of passage or the marking of social hierarchy. Dancers have conveyed many important social meanings to our communities. All dance forms in Tonga and I believe the same uh, can be seen in Polynesia and elsewhere the world over. Uh, they all have social functions, you see. One thing about Tongan dance, the Langalaka and the Maulu'ulu, is you have certain positions that are the chiefly positions. Right, right in the middle there, in the Langalaka, is the, the, the place for the most um, 
uh, chiefly person. It's called Vahenga. And Vahenga is uh, it's a very prestigious position. And sometimes people um, complain about um, you know, people being put in that position who should not be there. This indicates the importance of, of rank in Tonga eh? and um, putting the right person in the right position. There's also a similar, not just the woman's uh, um, place, but also the man's place. Then there's usually the third down the line, you have the, the best dancer. Right, who may be a commoner, but the best dancer. And then right at the end of the line, you, you have another important position that has a, we, you call that position the fafoto. Right? And, uh, and so there are protocol relating to the positioning of people in the dance. Tau Alunga, or Tongan Tau Alunga, has been used for a number of social purposes. Uh, one of which is a uh, means of uh, selecting uh, bad mates for for members of the aristocracy or, or royalty. <laughs> Many of our dancers are a reinforcement of the wider notion of a communal rather than individual identity, something inherent in all Polynesian cultures. One of the interesting ones for me is the uh, the sasa, which is a sitting down dance, which is also a group dance, and everybody sits in a straight line. And to me, that signifies a whole village, a whole community, a group dance, which is what Samoan society is about. It's a form of storytelling, but it's put into action. Often there are stories that are danced to memorialize moments of our social history. In the past, a lot of, uh, of uh, dance choreographers and composers combined their ideas in a, like during the Mao movement, which is when a lot of, when Samoa was fighting for independence, a lot of composers and dancers and, and choreographers had put together numbers that was to express how people were suffering at that time. And also in our history, there have been many other dancers. One of our infamous dance, which a lot of our people don't actually talk about it much, is called the Tafiauhi, and it's very much a party dance, you know, if you can equate it to a party dance. And it's usually a, either a celebration after, uh, after they've won something. And it's basically an erotic dance because they, it, it's dance around a fire. Huge, a huge fire is built and usually done at night. And then people just celebrate and, and dance around this fire. And according to our very religious, um, you know, um, elves in the community, it's, it's not a dance that they talk about because it's supposed to be a naughty dance. Well, Paula essentially liked dancing. And the missionaries, when, when they saw what they saw and described in one of the books, one of the literature, um, thought that this was not good at all for spreading the gospel. What it was was that uh, the village, as the night gets on and everybody gets more excited and happy, then all of a sudden into the middle of the house would burst this row of old women and they would strip right down to nothing and they would do their thing. They would dance and everybody would be clapping. And then they would be joined very soon by young women doing the same thing. And then they would taunt the men, come on, now we've done our bit, you come and do your dance. And the men, of course, a bit embarrassed and shy, take a little time to encourage them, but eventually they would come into the middle of the floor and they'd do their thing as well, strip down and dance naked. And the missionaries thought, well, this is not going to help our message if we allow this to continue, so they banned it. Robert Louis Stevenson, on the other hand, thought that that was not very nice to do, to stop a cultural uh, practice of a community. When the missionaries came into the scene, that's what the that's the first thing they wanted to stop. Oh no, nobody's doing the bushes tonight. You know, for some ones, they also um, celebrate the physique of the body. You know, the actual formation and and the body itself is they celebrate. And while well, celebration, the body, of course, sex is there as well. And Paula was more like a sexual gathering. When the missionary came in to Rarotonga, they, they, 
outlawed all types of dancing and costuming. They outlawed it. For a time, it uh, was uh, driven underground, so to speak. Uh, it almost had to be reintroduced into Rarotonga from the outer islands. Uh, so that was the initial impact. And so a lot of the, the types of chants, the types of uh, performances, types of costumes that was used were wiped. These are New Zealanders. Like the native New Zealanders, they are proud to call themselves Maoris. The Maoris of the Cook Islands. <laughs> His Excellency sees what happens when Rarotonga, Samoa and Tahiti get together. Contrary to the cliché of all islanders shaking their hips in a hula skirt, Pacific dancers all have distinctive styles, even within groups like the Cook Islands. Each island has their own uniqueness. It's the pitch of the drumming, uh, it's also the way that they uh, present their chants, the various forms of it, uh, the, the history that they're trying to tell. We all go on about, oh yeah, that's Tahitians and, and this is Thailand way. But we, we actually came from Tahiti and Samoa. So, you know, I think they tend to forget that. But it could be that maybe in the past Tahiti did, did um, lose a bit of their traditional dancing and so they took from us. And, you know, now they've, well, they've got a lot more money to, to pour into their, their culture and that. It's been an ongoing battle where the the, the Tahitians claim that the Cook Islanders are copying theirs and the Cook Islanders are saying that the Tahitians are copying theirs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna follow that path and, and be involved with it. As long as that Cook Islands flavor and is in, it, it's, it's in the, the performances, as long as we don't drift too far away from it, then we'll be all right. Such sentiments are often expressed at the annual Maeva Nui Festival in Rarotonga, where movements unique to the Cook Islands can be seen. Basically, I think we do a lot more side movements, um, and the Tahitian tend to do sort of a round movement. And in the Cook Island dancing, the feet are together. Uh, if you notice in the Tahitian dancing, the feet are apart. And that does make a big difference to the way your hips swing. And the Hawaiian is not so much a hip swinging as we and the Tahitians you know, do it. It's more like a step and then your hip goes. So. This circles, triangles, um, all sorts of uh, formations on the on the stage. Even you see dancers on another stage at the back, and another stage on the slide. And they're trying to make use of stage and try making use of the the movements in the uh, by following the beats, following the songs. The rhythms in Eastern Polynesia are so are so. Uh, Oh, I, I hate to say this, it's, it's probably so crude, you know, uh, uh, because they, they, they are so concrete, so obvious, so you see, see those rhythms on, on the surface of it immediately, whereas in Western Polynesia, you, you've got to work your way uh, in do the dance in order to see exactly. That's what I experienced with the Samoan Dalunga. The emotions and the movements of the dance itself, with the Siva, which is the individual performance of the Taupo, you'll notice that she will not uh, take wide sweeping arcs with her hands. She will not wiggle her hips. She will remain basically uh, straight up and down, but her feet and toes will be the only things that will move to get her to move a little bit sideways to either side or forwards or back. But it's her hands that do the talking, if you like, with her dance. I think it's the idea of keeping a particular space um, to oneself, particularly if you're the main person who are, who's doing the siva, the dance. And uh, the other dancers, of course, will work their way around that dancer. And the space in between them is a very relevant uh, aspect of the siva or the dance. You 
Samón. Tagolo, which is very clever, a clever deployment of rhythm. They, they do it in between beats, whereas in the case of Tonga, we do it on the beat. We, we do the dance on the beat, but for the Samoans, they do the, 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 the dance in between the beats, and, and somehow you have the feeling of, of, of uh, kind of off-beat, but at the same time, it's still on the beat. But, but they cleverly inject uh, their movements in between beats. You have that kind of, that, 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 that feeling of, of, of urgency, of, of, of being uncomfortable, yet you are comfortable that it's the rhythm is there. <laughs> Ma'ululu was a Samoan dance, is a Samoan dance, group dance, uh, which was um, borrowed by the Tongans and took to Tonga. And so they now perform a version of the Ma'ululu. And I must say, I like that version too. It's all connected, you know. Samoan is connected to Tongan dancing and, you know, it has this sort of interconnect. It's like a necklace of actions. The beauty of it is that when you see the girls, and the guys, they're so graceful in their actions. Yeah. Their eyebrows, they need to like move out and they need to like look at their hands when they're like performing. Their heads, like they need a deck here that's called like you just move it to the side. Yeah, and that's like, that's what I reckon. The movement is expected to be near to the meaning, yet far from it. And, and can you see that it's, you know, it, 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 it must not be seen to be too literal. This is the literal uh, action. You know, you, you apply this thing and then you wash it in the thing. But when you, when you put that into a kind of dance movement, this is how you do it, you know? <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs>